Hi, this is Ken Willis of Cadence Design Systems. Welcome to Sigurdy Tech Tips. Today we bring you another installment of how to sign off on your power delivery network design. Our video today will show you how PCB design teams can leverage existing information about the power delivery network captured in the schematic to speed up the setup of PDN analysis. Utilizing Allegro Sigurdy power integrity technology, design engineers can capture and graphically validate a topology of the PDN. This topology, or power tree, assures that all those pesky unnamed nets are included and can also automate the process of assigning source and sync information for the routed PCB. No longer will PCB designers or power integrity experts have to spend hours or even days entering the PDN analysis setup information or even use spreadsheets to replicate the PDN structure. Instead, this information, along with other setup information stored in the analysis model library, allow for virtual push-button setup for IR drop analysis. This means that as project deadlines loom at crunch time, you can focus on analysis rather than preparing for analysis. With the comprehensive Sigurdy PCB power integrity solution, product reliability will be higher, design cycle time will be shorter, and your design team just might be recognized as the stars of your next company meeting. In today's video, you will see us utilize the Allegro Sigurdy PI base and PI sign-off and optimization option. To learn more about these products, visit us at www.cadence.com. Now I'll turn it over to my colleague. Thanks, Ken. DC Power Integrity, or IR Drop Analysis, is critical for getting your design up to spec. Involving the design engineer and board designer earlier makes it easier to resolve placement, layout, and routing issues. A power tree is a logical view of the power delivery network that can be shared by the entire design team, design engineer, PCB designer, and PI expert. The design engineer creates the power tree from schematic and it contains all the component settings and constraints needed to accurately complete designs. Design engineers can use a power tree to run pre-layout analysis of the power distribution network, or PDN, and ensure that component selection meets the power requirements. The power tree, along with power integrity constraints, guide the PCB designer in making better, more informed decisions about the effects of placement and routing of the PDN. Power integrity experts can use the same power tree after physical placement to automate the setup of their power integrity simulation of the completed layout. This will save a lot of critical time in the PCB design cycle as the dozens or even hundreds of power nets, including the unnamed nets, in a PCB design are all automatically assigned the correct voltage criteria. Let's look at how easy it is to set up and configure a power tree for PDN analysis and ensure you're working with the right components for your design criteria. To do that, we're going to assume we are early in the design cycle and create our power tree from the schematic. Since we only need a netlist to build the power tree, we can build it whenever it's convenient. But the earlier you create a power tree, the earlier you can identify power integrity problems. The first step is to identify through components. The complete source to sync power topology is extracted from the schematic. If you have already started your layout, you can also launch power tree from Allegro PI base or Allegro PCB designer. And of course, the same configurations will be created automatically. We need more parameters for this sync and to specify the source or voltage regulator module, VRM. In this design, pin 2 of L37 is a positive pin. And we'll use all Q4 ground pins for negative. The system automatically identifies more than two pin through components with minimal manual input from the design engineer. Now all you need to do is specify the connections for the through components. For this one, it's the first two. If the component is not a through component, that's easy too. Just click not a through component. Same here, not a through component. And now we have a power tree. It shows the entire design connecting the VRM to all sinks. You can check and modify parameters for each component in the power tree. The ASI model property was read from the design, so you can predefine the proper value. This is important for future mapping of the model between Analysis Model Manager, AMM, and the design. If you have used a different property name to identify your models, PowerTree can use that property name as well. 
Of course, you can change any of these properties individually, and you could apply global default settings as well. If you want to use AMM data to overwrite the power tree properties, you can do that too. We'll load an AMM profile and go back to the power tree to automatically map the AMM data. And as you can see, they're matched. The ones that couldn't be matched are also clearly identified. If we go back to the same resistor as before, the values have changed to be updated with the data from the AMM. Continuing to poke around, we see the current has been changed on the sink as well, also from the AMM. Now that we're all set up, it's time to run the pre-layout simulation and make sure we've selected the right components for a design criteria. With just the click of a mouse, boom! We can see what has passed and what has failed. Let's dive into why the sink failed. The resistance here is too large. Maybe the model is not correct. So you could change it and run the simulation again to see if you get the correct result. Once you're satisfied with your component selection, you can save the power tree to use later after layout. The PCB designer completes the board layout like normal, but you've already made power appropriate component selections before he even starts the layout. Now let's look at what we do once we get the board layout. Here's our design with all the components placed. Use the same power tree created earlier for this project to simulate the post layout board. Quickly disable the nets to make it easier to see. Just load the saved power tree and apply with the handy wizard. After a quick review to make sure it's the one you want, simply review how it will be applied. First, the power net and pairing ground net, and then the setup can be initiated. Instantly, all the settings, VRM, sinks, and discrete components are there. All it takes now is one click to run the post layout simulation. Once the simulation is done, save it. Back in PowerDC, you see the post layout simulation results. The 2D distribution is an easy to understand visual representation of power for the whole board. It's common to cross probe with the power tree from the post layout simulation results. Being able to view the logical PDN can be advantageous in coming up with a plan to fix a violation in the physical design. In addition, if pre layout analysis was performed, Seeing the differences between an ideal PDN and the physical PDN can also be useful, like voltage differences on this pin. Both the PCB designer and the power integrity expert can quickly see the discrepancy here. We're going to need to fix that. Using a common shared power tree with the entire design team gives everyone the information to make smart design decisions. By providing insights into the PDN to the PCB designer during design, engineering teams see a reduction in power-related late-stage design changes. Instead of worrying about basic PI issues, the experts can tune the PDN for maximum performance at the lowest possible cost. And instead of tearing up the board and starting over at the 11th hour, the PCB designer can complete the job right the first time and get started on the next assignment. Back to Ken. Thank you for watching another edition of Sigurdi Tech Tips. For information on the products used in today's video, click on the links below or contact your local Cadence sales representative or Cadence channel partner.